we prepare to listen and learn with open hearts and open minds. May the Son of our God lead us into faith. There is no guide like our God. Come worship the Lord who is in our midst today. I invite you to stand as you are able for our first hymn, My Soul Cries Out, in our hymnal Voices Together, number 412. So children i'd like to invite you over here out of the canopy of wonder for a minute i am actually going to need your help real soon with some heavy lifting you ready to use those muscles yeah i think we're going to get some people from the congregation to help us as well but they'll be following us so have you noticed that it's been getting cold outside we're in the clouds right now aren't we you see the fog on the way here well, because it's getting cold outside, we are mindful that there are some people that don't have jackets, that don't have blankets to stay warm now that it's becoming winter and becoming cold. And part of being a Christian is helping those in need, isn't it? So have you noticed outside of the sanctuary, the big pile of coats and jackets and blankets? Well, we need to give those away soon because it's getting cold. So we wanna bring those into the sanctuary. We wanna pray a blessing on them for the people that they are going to go to. 
all right? And remind ourselves that especially in these holiday times that are coming up, that we think of those who are less fortunate than us, who don't have as much as we do. And so we can help them in any way that we can, okay? So you're gonna help us go outside and bring those coats and blankets in here. And I'm gonna ask, because there are a lot out there, thank you. Uh, anyone who would like to help, uh, mentors or students, uh, mentees, anyone at all, uh, many hands make light work, but we would like to pile them here on the table and in front of the table. And then with the children, we will pray a prayer of blessing. So if you could all stand, follow the children out as we go get some blankets and jackets. Head on out towards the back, please. Thank you. 
children. We're going to pray a prayer of blessing over these coats and blankets. So can you all put a hand on them somewhere? Everybody put a hand on them somewhere. Holy God, we offer these coats and blankets to you and ask your blessing upon them. May your peace and justice and love spread from this act of giving. Be with those who receive these coats and blankets through the cold season and bring them warmth and comfort. We ask that you continue to challenge us to find ways to be like your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to pray with me now for our church, community, and world. Holy God, we are drawn to your presence. Your love brings us comfort and hope, and we seek to spread that love to those around us. We thank you for the generous gifts that are before us. Give us the strength and conviction to continue your work so that we may become a contagious community of faith. Though we often feel inadequate or even spiritually impoverished, we look to you to help us build your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Be with our congregation, Lord. Bring us healing, love, comfort, and reconciliation where we need it. This we ask in your name. Be with our community. Give our community compassion, prosperity, and justice. Be with our world, Lord, and let your peace and justice reign. Creator God, our prayers to you bind us together, and we ask your blessing and healing on these petitions. for Pekisa's travel later this week, and arrangements for a travel assistant is meeting many obstacles. From Kat and David, for peace and comfort for the Fresno State Philosophy Department and the family of their colleague, Anthony, who passed away Friday morning. for approval of an emergency visa for a traveling companion to bring Pekisa home. For Nathan and Grace Yoder and family as they grieve the death of their son, Kyle. Together, we offer these prayers to you. Lord, we praise your name from morning till night and we confess our many shortcomings to you. We are led astray by so many temptations in this world, but together we hold fast to your love. Guide us in our efforts to work together for the good of the world and to prepare for the day of the Lord. In your name we pray, amen. I invite you to join in song once more with Lord, I am fondly, earnestly longing number 555. Five, five. Thank you. 
Our first scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of Hebrews, a book whose author remains unknown, and yet the message of encouragement continues to echo through the generations. And so hear now these words from Hebrews 10, verses 22 to 25. Let us approach with a true heart in the full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds not neglecting to meet one another, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. Amen. This passage is the outset of Mark 13, a chapter sometimes called the Markan Apocalypse. It's Jesus' final teaching to his disciples before the passion overtakes him. And in that sense, it's a bit of a farewell. The temple will be destroyed and desecrated, Jesus says. A time of great suffering will follow. But then new signs will appear and the child of humanity will arrive and make everything right. Jesus frames current and coming struggles as birth pains, signs of an imminent new era getting ready to be born. 
As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these buildings, replied Jesus? Not one stone will be here left here. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thank be you. to God. Last week's prompt in our weekly writing group, which anyone is welcome to join, by the way, was this. List 50 things that make you smile. I thought to myself, I can at least list at least 75 things in 20 minutes of writing. But what actually happened, and the life that these lists took on as we shared, really surprised me. First of all, it was really hard to list 50 things in 20 minutes. I only made it to 42. At first, I was really down on myself about this. How could I only have 42 things to smile about? What did this say about me? And if you're a fan of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, 42 is totally a coincidence. But what happened as we shared was truly beautiful. As one person shared what made them smile, it made the rest of us smile too. Hearing what made someone else smile reminded me of so many other things that make me smile, reminded me of things that I had forgotten and needed to hear someone else say in order for me to remember. This somehow made me feel more grounded and able to resist the temptation to think but there's not really much to smile about these days. As each of us in turn shared the lists of things that made us smile, the air in the room was filled with more light and loveliness than I could have possibly imagined. Light and loveliness, however, is not exactly what we get when we read today's gospel lesson from Mark 13 this morning. Wars and rumors of wars, nation rising against nation, earthquakes, famines, and this is but the beginning. Like I said, not exactly light and loveliness. What is this ancient story? And if this is the gospel, where is the good news? This story is situated in a longer passage in the gospel of Mark containing Jesus' final message, final teaching, what scholars sometimes call his farewell discourse. The text itself was written down during the time of the Jewish Roman war that took place between the years 66 and 70. That war was precipitated by a Jewish revolt against Roman occupation, which resulted in the destruction of the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. But the time period of the story itself takes place some 30 odd years before the time it was written down during the life of Jesus in the final years of a temple complex building project that took more than 80 years to complete. It was massive and opulent, a true palace to house God. The temple itself was part of the foundations of Jewish faith. Those stones that the disciples were so amazed by, if you can imagine this, were 12 feet high by 18 feet wide, by 35 feet long, one stone. Solid, rock solid, 
stable and certain and sure, absolute. And yet, Jesus says, that not one of these stones will be left standing upon another. And the disciples, understandably, cannot fathom it. Can you imagine what that would really be like? What do you trust with that kind of absolute certainty? Really think about it. Anything? For many of us, that kind of loss of innocence, when the foundations of our own faith were somehow compromised, happened a long time ago. Natural disasters like fire and earthquakes, tsunamis, floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, leave devastations in their wakes. Or maybe that loss of innocence came as a result of human-created devastation like war, famine, or political chaos. Maybe it was the tragic death of a loved one or a global pandemic that changed your world forever. Maybe it's not even something outside of yourself. Our own minds can get sick and tell us things about ourselves and others that aren't true. Maybe it's disappointment in the church, religious leaders, the Bible, or even God. Can you hear those last few verses from the gospel reading echoing here? Wars and rumors of wars. These kinds of texts make us really uncomfortable. But this is where we need to start if we're going to hear the good news that emerges from these kinds of treacherous depths of pain, grief, and darkness. When the foundations of our faith erode, it actually become obstacles to our faith. When we experience a profound sense of loss or loss of innocence, how do we reclaim a posture of hope and trust? This passage here at the end of Mark's gospel, in these few verses, his message is this, beware. Beware that no one leads you astray. What leads us astray, even today, jeopardizes the foundations of our own faith. And so when I consider what implications there might be for us, two postures come to mind that can help reclaim a posture of hope and trust, though I'm sure you can think of more, and I would love to hear what else you can think of. The first posture that comes to mind for me is resistance. We must resist the urge to provide easy answers. They often do more harm than good. For example, in 1 Samuel, which there's a snippet of at the top of your bulletin, Hannah is in the temple and she's singing this song of gratitude and praise after she has had a long period of infertility, after she has experienced so much pain and grief, after she has been ridiculed even by the priests. I have so many friends who have struggled with infertility and their suffering is exponentially compounded by responses like, God took your baby because he needed another angel. To put it mildly, that is utter rubbish and horrific theology. But we do this because we have some sort of compulsory need for what we consider to be answers. Callistos Ware, who's an English bishop and theologian of the Eastern Orthodox Church, offers this corrective. It is not the task of Christianity to provide easy answers to every question, but to make us progressively more aware of a mystery. God is not so much the object of our knowledge as the cause of our wonder. The object of our knowledge in our pain, we grasp for knowledge, for information. We think information is certain and absolute, and we mistakenly think that knowledge about God is power over God, power to avoid or wiggle out of suffering by trying to make sense of it. Our compulsion for easy answers, in fact, leads us astray from true intimacy with one another and true intimacy with God. For me, the second posture is remembrance. 
we are so easily led astray by our forgetfulness. We forget that the word of God is a person and not a book. We forget that Christianity is a dynamic practice, something we work toward, not a static set of propositions to sign on to. We forget that the church is a community of people making their way together in an attempt to follow Jesus, not a court of law that rules with an iron fist. So how do remembrance and resistance help us to recover a posture of trust and hope after the loss of faith? What good news is there that can reach us in the deepest, darkest trenches of this kind of despair? I think Hannah's song in 1 Samuel offers some light for us. A woman who has suffered deeply from infertility, she situates her own personal story of humiliation, grief, and despair by remembering and resisting, by placing herself in the larger narrative of God's story at home in the world, dwelling among humans and creation. Hannah resists the bad theology that she is only worth something if she is a mother and stands up to a priest who assumes the worst of her. She remembers who she is and who God is. It's tempting when we're in pain to pull ourselves out of context, which naturally makes us feel terribly isolated and alone. But when we put ourselves in context, in context of community, we not only see the bigger picture, but the long arc of the story of which we are a part. We remember that God's ultimate plan for all of humanity is that all would flourish, that all would find the fullness of life that overflows. The Bible calls this salvation, and it's a process. It's a process of claiming for ourselves and proclaiming to one another that there is good news and abundant life. Later in Mark chapter 13, the word is watch, a call to attention, to be mindful and alert. Horrible things can, do, and will happen. But when the foundations of faith as we know it shake and crumble, don't give way to the world's way of violence, nationalism, and greed. Remember and resist. Don't give in to religious extremism and drawing lines in the sand. Instead, let us proclaim God's kingdom on earth and resist destructive narratives like these. Let our actions be guided by the beauty of God's truth and goodness, for these things are the things that are trustworthy, and this foundation is sure. The beauty of God's truth and goodness are things that we can build, even rebuild our lives on. When we do this, we situate ourselves firmly in the wider stream of God's intention for the world that all people and creation might flourish. This is how we endure instances of pain, grief, and despair. This is how we fill our lives and the world with God's light and loveliness. So I want to invite you to consider three things that make you smile. Try to think of three things right now. Just take a moment. If you wanna close your eyes, you can do that. Three things that make you smile. And if you would, make an intention somehow this week to share those three things with others. It might make sense to tell someone directly, or you might find a way to share the thing itself. But pay attention to what happens next. Pay attention. Watch for how the light and loveliness that fills you can and does spread from you. This, too, is remembering. This, too, is resisting. So may we lean on each other, sharing things that make us smile, 
and by so doing make God's way and God's love a reality, a foundation for new life and hope for the whole world. Amen. Thank you to Pastor Audrey for giving us so much to think about this morning. May God settle these things in our hearts and minds through the rest of the day and in this upcoming week. I just want to let you know about a few things this morning. The first being what's taking place after the worship service this morning in our um, fellowship time and second hour. Um, so following the service, we'll have half hour of fellowship time. Um, I know those of you on Zoom will take advantage of that together as well. And then at 11 o'clock um, in our second hour, we have um, Lenore will be doing music with the children. So I know everyone is, I know they're all looking forward to that. And for the um, bigger ones of us, it's part two of our annual business meeting. Um, and I want to just give you a little information about that. Um, this is both for those who are on Zoom and those who are here. Um, the important thing to note is that from 11 o'clock, before we kind of do the business of the business meeting, um, we are going to have small group listening time. And we've mentioned this in the email and things, but we're doing that first. This is the part that I want you to know. So from 11 o'clock, small group listening sessions, um, kind of giving us all the opportunity to talk about our hopes, our concerns, specific suggestions we have. Um, regarding the proposal um, for our congregation to be a welcoming and affirming congregation to LGBTQIA plus people um, without reservation. So, so we're doing that first in small groups at the back of the room. So on your way out, there's little numbers, one through five. Each of those numbers um, means a place. It's all listed there. So number one is in here. I think number one and two are in here on down the line. So just, you can see which council person is gonna be in which space. And so basically take a number and at 11 o'clock, you go to whichever space matches your number. And it's really gonna be a time to talk. The council is just there to listen and kind of take notes. And then at 11.40, we will come back together, um, kind of report back what we've heard and, and then take our votes on the budget and leadership roles for next year. Hopefully that's clear, but if not, ask me after the service and the fellowship time or Pastor Audrey. Um, I do want to make note, particularly that those are on Zoom. There will be a small group on Zoom um, starting at 11 o'clock as well. And then for everyone, whether you're in person or you're at home or you're somewhere else, um, you can vote. If you're here, you'll be able to vote in person. We've got paper ballots to vote um, and we've also emailed um, all of the regular attenders a ballot as well. So if you're not here this morning, or if you're on Zoom, you can vote um, from 11 o'clock until noon tomorrow. So it'll be open. I ask that just vote once. So if you vote in person, don't vote online, you know, obviously. Um, so we're trusting you to do that for our vote. So that's how the second hour is going to happen. And the business meeting is going to happen this morning then I can fly through the rest of the stuff, but it's important too. Um, so you'll have seen hopefully in the bulletin, some other important things coming up. I wanna point out particularly that on the 21st, so in two weeks time at 12 o'clock next Sunday, oh my, is it already? Okay, next Sunday is the 21st, everyone. So that means it's almost Thanksgiving, isn't it? Um, 
On next Sunday, the 21st at noon is a special nature journaling taking place at the Clovis Botanical Garden. And I wanna point this out because it's obviously it's not on campus here and it's a great opportunity to invite other people uh, maybe someone who's a little bit wary of coming to the church service, but they'd be interested in coming to kind of a journaling opportunity. So um, Pastor Audrey can tell you a lot more details about what that time looks like, but I wanna just highlight that this morning that that's next Sunday at 12 o'clock at the Clovis Botanical Garden. Um, and then I want to thank everyone. I mean, we've seen this morning the number of blankets and clothes that have come in. I encourage you to continue to bring those in um, as we're collecting those to give to our Head Start families and our neighbors um, through next week. And then as well, this is the last morning to donate toward our Head Start gift cards. So we give Thanksgiving gift cards to the Head Start families and staff. Um, I want to thank all the people that have donated so far. If you want to donate toward that to the purchase of gift cards, um, just on a check or on an online donation, just indicate that it's for Head Start, and we will know that that's for the Head Start gift cards. Um, thank you for that. Thank you for all of the ways um, that everyone here participates and gives. Um, in fact, this past week, I just want to highlight this, and then I'll sit down, is um, CCMRS, which is one of the um, partner organizations that we work with and have been part of for a very long time, um, has a group called the Action Club, and what they do is they meet two Thursdays a month, um, and they come, to come and learn business skills. And as of this past Wednesday, so it was different this week, um, they're meeting here in our fellowship hall on, on their meeting nights. So we're really glad to host the CCMRS Action Club. And I, and I will tell you more about that as it progresses, because there'll be opportunities for our congregation to be involved. And um, it's a great opportunity. So that's it for me. Please do look through. Um, the bulletin for the rest of the information and um, we'll be outside after the service as well so um joe let's sing a song two more announcements first um our christmas tradition on the 19th of december continues it'll be a musical night and if you play an instrument or sing and would like an open mic and an audience, you're welcome to come and sing either a sacred Christmas song or a secular Christmas song. We'll have two sections. So either one you'd like to do or both or both. Um, just let myself or Lenore know and um, we'll coordinate some time we can rehearse together. And second, after this service, we're going to have just a brief run through for the choir. So um, it, it will only be a few minutes. We're just gonna run through the anthem for next week, okay? And our closing song, number 78, please stand. Um, boys, you can come pass out the instruments. Um, please raise your hand if you'd like to try playing one of these percussion instruments. Um, and we're gonna be playing along with this, this African tune. Don't be shy. And while they're passing out those instruments, um, we'll go through the words. Um, this is familiar to this congregation. It's a new one to me, um, so I did some research on it. And um, it's in Swahili, which um, reads kind of like Latin pronunciation wise. So it's si zohamba naye, wo wo wo, si zohamba naye. So um, if we're speaking in rhythm, it'd be, and we repeat that once. And then um, the second part is So um, speaking in rhythm, it's um, Okay. And then we'll sing the first verse in um, Swahili, we'll repeat. And then second verse, English, third verse, English. And then we'll repeat again with our percussion instruments and go through the whole song again.
As God loves you, carry that love out into the world with peace, hope, and faith. Go in peace. Oh. <sighs>